In this segment, I'd like to discuss the origin of the German youth movement and its influences on the Bruderhof. Most scholars date the founding of the German youth movement to 1896. In reaction to the organized social and cultural clubs for youth run by adults at that time, a group called the Wandervogel, which means birds of passage in German, was founded. As an independent group of young people, led by young people ranging in ages from 14 to 20, the Wandervogel attracted thousands of participants in its first years. The group's activities were, as the name suggests, hiking or wandering and camping, although there was a lot of interest in traditional folk music and singing as well. The Wandervogel and the splinter youth groups that soon developed were at least at first an unpolitical form of opposition to a civilization that the youth found restrictive. They felt a lack of vitality, warmth, emotions, and ideals in modern culture and yearned for sincerity, decency, and open-mindedness. What caused this reaction? I think you can say there was a cultural crisis in Germany at the turn of the century. After unification under Bismarck in 1871, Germany underwent rapid industrialization. With industrialization came a shift in population from the traditional villages where agriculture was a mainstay to the cities where factory jobs were plentiful, although neither particularly well-paid nor safe. Pollution increased, living conditions were miserable, moral depravity and crime surged. It's not hard to imagine a sense of strangeness and dislocation among the new city dwellers, particularly the young. Turning to nature through hiking or rambling provided a welcome escape from the drudgery of urban working life and the first decade of the 20th century saw a tremendous growth in youth activities of this kind. In October 1913, the Wandervogel and other youth groups gathered on the Hohe Meissner Mountains to seek common ground and potentially create a unified organization. There were many speeches and declarations and among the participants a strong sense of responsibility for the future of the nation. One of the speakers asserted that the German house is on fire and we are the fire brigade. And this was received with general acclamation. One result of the conference was a statement of common aims and shared beliefs. These so-called Meissner principles declared in part, the members of the free German youth want to determine the shape of their lives for themselves on their own responsibility and with integrity. They band together to represent this inner freedom under all circumstances. Less than a year later, these same young people, or the men at least, marched enthusiastically off to war. The poet and writer Ina Seidel wrote, We had not known the reason of our existence. Youth had seemed to us a burden and a curse. O oh, holy fortune to be young today. Yet as the war went on and the realities of war became apparent, patriotic enthusiasm waned. In the early days of the war, it had been commonly assumed that its moral effect would be that of a great purifying fire. It would destroy everything that was rotten and decaying. But gradually, it became apparent that the war was bound also to destroy many real values and achievements. And it was bringing in its train a general brutalization which could be nothing less than an immense cultural and moral catastrophe. One von der Vogel poet wrote, when they return home, they will no longer want to dance and their faith is broken. However, there was a new generation of youth growing up who had been too young for military service and they were rediscovering the Meissner principles. These young people who joined together as the free German youth saw the war as a disaster and their principles proclaimed the exact opposite. Joy in life, courage to venture out and discover life in all its diversity and to be open to all its promises. The search for a unifying life force was an essential element of this new youth movement. They were distrustful of conventional Christianity and many of them turned to nature, exulting in the might of wind, water, and the mountains. They saw the sun with its properties of light, heat, and purifying fire 
as an especially potent symbol of the spiritual reality lying behind nature. Such feelings led some back to paganism and Germany's ancient folk religions. But for others, reverence for nature became a confirmation of genuine faith in Christ and swept away stale religious customs. Turning their backs on the cities, groups of young people banded together in villages, fields, and woods, seeking to experience truth in nature. Conventional social forms were replaced by folk traditions and culture, and formal manners gave way to frank exchanges of thought. Eberhard and Emmy Arnold, the couple who eventually founded the Bruderhof, had moved in different, mostly evangelical circles, and had heard almost nothing of the pre-war youth movement. Eberhardt's work as co-editor of a religious periodical and occasional lecturer had mostly focused his efforts on the salvation of the individual soul. But the war made both him and Emmy painfully aware of the social and economic injustice around them, which were the same evils the youth movement reacted so vehemently against. Although Epperhart was always clear that faith in Christ was an essential component of any change, he was deeply moved and inspired by the youth movement's genuine desire to discover the highest and noblest calling of humanity. For that reason, it was with the members of the Free German Youth, rather than with their former evangelical friends, that Epperhart and Emmy began to imagine a life in a community where all members could share their earthly belongings as the first Christians had done. They began to meet weekly, sometimes twice a week, in their home in Berlin with between 50 and 70 others to discuss how these ideas might find practical application. Their search for community did not fit in with that of any existing party or movement because they rejected all ideologies and theories and set out to realize social justice practically in their own lives.